Good afternoon, all. Um, I wanted to say, ladies and gentlemen, and I realized that uh, the only ladies that are here came with me, and I've already greeted them. Oh, uh, ladies and gentlemen, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Good afternoon. I'm very sorry for the delay. It's uncharacteristic of myself and uh, and the party. I think I should say. <coughs> Uh, I was held up at a funeral. We, our son-in-law lost his father, tragically. He just collapsed and died. So we, we were buried, and I had to, to try and navigate my way out of that burial and, and come here. I am very, very sorry for, for that delay. Um, the National Council met yesterday virtually as it has been doing in the past following what uh, i have seen most of you describe as chaotic and uh, violent eoc um, i must say that uh, as i was coming here i got a call from professor matuku who's our lead legal counsel and uh, he said to me, he has spoken to Madam President and there is an agreement that uh, there is a legal opinion coming uh, today from the legal team headed by Professor Madube, uh, sorry, Maduku, which uh, legal opinion uh, will guide leadership going forward with regards to the EOC and also most of the things that emanated from that National Council yesterday. So you will appreciate that uh, I am not going to be long as the statement which was prepared by the National Council yesterday because uh, that legal opinion from the professor uh, is important that uh, uh, it's considered maybe before the, 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 the full statement of the National Council. That's what the professor said to me. The National Council met uh, yesterday. Uh, it retaliates its adherence to its founding values and principles of constitutionalism, transparency, democracy, accountability, fairness, and non-discrimination amongst others. It condemns increasingly the increasingly ill discipline exhibited by some members of the party and is calling upon all to moderate behavior which is in conformity with the founding values and principles of the party. The National Council notes with disdain the deviant behavior of some of our top leadership in the run-up and the during, to, during the extraordinary con uh, uh, Congress. Condemns with contempt the type of behavior aforesaid, sabotaging of sabotaging the party through creation of fraudulent voters' role, embezzlement of party funds, as well as organizing <coughs> and coordinating violence targeted at other candidates in the EOC. The National Council endorses and upholds the move made by the acting president to suspend the EOC uh, since it became clear uh, with the violence that was there, the manipulation of the voters' role, that it is not possible to hold a free and fair process which was envisaged by the court when it ordered uh, that EOC. The National Council also <coughs> Is my voice low, or Blessed just wants to hear me scream? <laughs> the National Council appreciates that uh, whereas the party was ordered to hold an EOC, it wasn't a gathering of people just gathering to vote. An EOC is properly prescribed in our constitution and there's set standards that are supposed to be met. And uh, that day, it really, really fell short of uh, 
of that standard, of their said standards. Denounce the so-called EOC resolutions circulating on social media and accordingly dismisses them as nullity with no effect <coughs> whatsoever, discussions and resolutions made by the Council. Um, ladies and gentlemen, like I said, much of this is subject to the legal advice, which uh, the top legal advisor is going to bring to us. I thank you. I'm going to take one or two questions, and like I said, most of <coughs> what we want to talk about uh, is subject to the legal advice which is going to come. Yes, I recognize you, my friend. Yes, thank you, Mr. Bogan. Um, my first question is that, uh, why is it that uh, uh, you are holding this press conference here when you have since uh, grabbed the Morgan John Rai uh, House uh, headquarters? And uh, is Mrs. Kube uh, still in control of the party uh, following uh, the uh, chaotic uh, EOC? And uh, did uh, Mr. Mondora participate in the virtual uh, National Council meeting yesterday? Okay. Yes, I think Dr. Kope is still in control of the party. But I think uh, there is no dispute that uh, there is a dispute. Yeah, fortunate enough, you were all there. You saw what happened uh, when there were others who wanted you out. We thought that you remain inside. So you saw everything that happened. So yes, she's still in control of the party, but indeed there is a dispute. And uh, it is that dispute which uh, uh, our top lawyer said he is writing an opinion uh, by today which will guide all leadership with regards to these things. Yes, sir, I recognize yes. <coughs> Yeah, I remember Dr. Kope said that uh, they will hold another EOC, but uh, in, uh, in terms of the court uh, judgment, you are, you are left with a few hours to, to reach your deadline. Are you going back to the court to, for condemnation to set another date for the USC? Well, the truth of the matter is that um, this is what I've just said. When the Supreme Court ordered an EOC, which is an extraordinary con Congress, it ordered an extraordinary Congress pursuant or in line with our constitution. That's very, very critical. So I was listening to the situation right now, which was done yesterday by, by, by Bless, and I listened to his opening remarks very carefully. And, and before anyone said a thing, he described what happened there, chaotic, extremely violent. Now, I am sure that the courts also saw that. I'm pretty sure. So I think the party, I'm tempted to carry out an EOC in fulfillment of the court judgment, but everyone agrees with what we saw, uh, that uh, it was impossible to have an outcome which rises to the level of free and fair. I, I recognize you, blessed, <coughs> and, and I'll come to you and, and I'll close. Uh, thank you. I just wanted to find out um, who attended the standing committee meeting in terms of the standing committee member. Um, and also, have you taken a side? Because there's a dispute here. You're the party spokesperson. Yeah, I haven't taken a side um, because uh, I'm starting with the last one before I go to I haven't taken a side. Uh, Madam President, they were going to give this statement yesterday. I think you guys were supposed to meet them yesterday. I was still busy with them. They were supposed to give this statement yesterday. For some reason, it was postponed today. And then it was agreed that uh, the party spokesperson must be the one communicating the message. So I really have not taken a side. Uh, if I'm to be accused of taking a side, is the fact that when Prof called me and said, don't read everything which is written there because I am still working with leadership, I accepted that. But no, I haven't taken a side. The standing committee has not met yet. Uh, it's some members of the National Council which met, uh, I must admit, it's not all of them. As I've already said, there is a dispute. 
and uh, which dispute I am sure that the leadership is equal to it. And they better be equal to it, because if they are not equal to it, you know then we are doomed. We are doomed in this country. But when I walked in here, I thought you were saying, since H.E. became president, you've never been hungry. Maybe, maybe I'm wrong when I'm saying, <laughs> I'm wrong when I'm saying, you, you need us to be vibrant and united for, for this democracy to thrive. I, I think I record, did I, did you, did I give you an opportunity? No, okay. Yes, let me recognize yeah. you. Uh, prior, oh, I'll come back to you. Prior to the Congress, uh, Madam Kobe said that she was helping the voters roll. <coughs> Uh, she also said that uh, the issue of party funds and measurement will be dealt with uh, at uh, the National Standing Committee and uh, that she was pretty happy with the progress that uh, has been made in terms of uh, the extraordinary Congress. What, what changed and at what point did things then turn around? And we also see so um, Blawayo causing commotion uh, because it was the first province to vote they also caused commotion mainly because their names, they, they claim that their names were, were not on the, on the voters' roll and the supplementary voters' roll, which is also the case with uh, Manikal and uh, maybe you can clarify the, uh, because Manikal and some of them, uh, their names were, were not also on the, the, the voters' roll. But then I think it was then agreed that we, we go ahead using the, the provincial list in terms of Blawai. Uh, what then changed with, with uh, reference to, to Manikal and you were at the, at the com Congress, yes, right? Yes, yes. Um, are you the one who asked the question when, when, when we were walking in with Madam <coughs> President? Or with somebody else? I was you there. there. Yeah, but oh, it's yeah, not was you. Also okay. Yes. You will appreciate that that question was asked when she was walking in. Yes, true. No incident yet taken place at that time. So she walks in there. The next thing fide delegates from Bulawayo were not in the voters roll, I think 17 plus, right? What then happened is that the chairperson of Bulawayo then went to the presiding officers and said to them, during the week I came here with my provincial secretary and yourselves and we signed a bona fide voters roll for signatories. And he said, that is what I want. Fortunate enough, that voters' roll was sought and it was found, and it's the one that was used. Now, there's this insidious commentary that seeks to, 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 to portray false equivalences between Manikaland and Bulawa in this way. Manikaland, they did not use a voters' roll which was signed by the provincial chair, provincial secretary, and the two top officials of the elections management board. No. In Manika land, as you would have seen, a lot of those things were handwritten uh, in the main, done there at the venue, and at times wanting the chairperson to identify, which was not the case with Bulawai. Bulawai, where they sought for a, a, a voter's role which they had agreed upon and signed and, and satisfied. So the, 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 that was the issue. Now, in the case of Totoko, because I was there, I remember trying to to, to, to limit the questions that are coming. In the case of Dr. Kupe, I think if anything that we should read from, from the, from the impromptu uh, press uh, briefing which she did as she was walking in, you could have seen the excitement and the enthusiasm that she had that finally this extraordinary Congress is taking off. But you would recognize what then happened when you were there. I had to ask all of you as journalists to stand with me by the corner there while least I find a way how you can remain there and be able to do your job. And I want to apologize to all of you uh, what you went through that day. It is not necessary. It is uncalled for. Uh, without you, this democracy fails. Now that is not to say that there are no faults. There are faults here and there, but we do need the media because if you don't have the media, you do not get the other side, especially of the town throttle and the, and the one without a voice. There's a question that is claimed that I didn't ask, answer. And then lastly, if there's a lady journalist, if there's a lady journalist, I'll ask a question. I'll, 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 I'll offer that lady journalist an opportunity to ask me a question, then, then, then that's it. What was the question that I didn't answer? I think I also need to add more so that uh, you, you can give it to anyone. Yeah, abusing. Yeah. They're abusing the platform. My apologies. Mm. Uh, <coughs> Mr. 
forget, I, I asked you if Mr. Mondora okay. was part of yesterday's virtual meeting. No, no, she, no, he wasn't. And the second question was, why are you holding this press conference here when Dr. Cook, okay. if Dr. Cook is in control of the MDC, which operates from uh, Morgan Richard Chandra House? Why are you here? No, I answered it. Maybe it, it, it was not so apparent to you that I was answering it. I said to you there is a dispute, and which dispute our lawyers have since intervened. And we are hoping we are giving room for that intervention to achieve something. Uh, but I also want you to take judicial notice that we've held press conferences at various locations, notwithstanding the fact that we have been in control of, uh, of, of, of HH. But I want to say this. I appreciate that... Um, controversy sells, but um, for the sake of the country, if what we saw on Sunday is a reflection of our society, then we're in trouble. For the life of me, who slaps a woman and finds that funny? But to make matters worse, and the nation thinks it's a joke, and no one seems to be appalled about it, and then later, when the national election happens and you see those type of scenes happening in the national election, then you want the whole country put under sanctions, you want America to intervene and whatsoever. No, because you must understand that the nation is a reflection of our individual characters. So what we saw on Sunday, any decent human has to be appalled by what we saw on Sunday. And I'm surprised that the coverage, maybe you are doing in some quarters, which I'm not seeing it, but the coverage leaves me shocked that what type of a country is this? I would have thought by now the culprit would have been found, the culprit would have been jailed, but there are jokes around about a woman, a defenseless woman, being slept in front of the whole world, and that is a joke. I think women and young people that want to get into politics looking at that, they've got a shiver running down the spine. I am, I am broken. I was trying to read here, and, and I think it is appropriate. This has to stop, my friends. We cannot transact politics in this manner. We, it doesn't matter. You have heard me sometimes defend uh, my sister, Mahere. I mean, we, we are politically different. Uh, we, we come from different angles. But when a platform was abusing me, I said, I'm going to boycott this platform. Because it is not right. It is not right. These are mothers. These are our sisters, these are our girls, these are our children. We must not treat women like this. And I can tell you something. The strange thing about politics is that no one tries to slap a man. You don't. You don't try to go after ED. You don't try to go after NC. You don't try to go any other male. No one has tried to slap me. You saw how heated it was when they wanted to move you out. Nobody tried to uh, men hang me or physically use me, uh, abuse me. But with women, it seems it's easy. It's our... It seems like it's a, you know, like kind of like a sport with us. But for me, what is scandalous is a nation that finds it a joke that a woman has been clapped and makes jokes about it. It's, we must say, ah, it's in shame as a nation. That is a sad day in this country because I can tell you, surely as I live, the scenes which you saw on Sunday here, they're going to happen in 2023. And you'll have nowhere to go to. I can tell you that. You'll have nowhere to go to because if you allow an internal process to be that violent and the country is joking and laughing about it, 2023 is coming. Don't tell us that the army was deployed, the army shot so many people. We're not going to listen to that because you are violent. You don't like violence when it's meted to you, but you like violence when it's meted to defenseless women. No, I am ashamed to be a Zimbabwean today because of what happened on Sunday and how the nation uh, reacted to it. And I want to apologize to you ladies who are here. I see the young lady here and I see the I really want to apologize to you. That was that was despicable. It was very much un, uh, unimaginable. And uh, we've got a pastor here, by the way. I came with my, with my cousin. There is a pastor there. And you pastors, you must speak there in your, in your, in your pulpits because you keep on saying hey, pul uh, politics and the Bible. No, that's not politics. When a woman is beaten like that, she's defenseless. You as pastors need to speak. Otherwise, we are not going to come to your churches and give you our tithes and offerings because that's all that you seem to talk about. That yeah, you are roping God, you are roping God. But uh, you are quiet now when women are, are, are beaten in broad day, a, a light like that, and the police are doing nothing. Everyone is doing nothing. So no, 
I'm, 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 I'm very much ashamed. Was there a last person before? Yes, I, before? I, I yes. want to follow up question. Mm. Uh, you, you say the, the, the press uh, conference was supposed to be held yesterday, but there were uh, <coughs> insinuation that it was uh, uh, stormed by the police and that the ones who stopped it, how far true is that? I don't know. I, I was still at the, the same funeral yesterday, so I, I, I don't know. But if such happened, I would have known about it. So I, I really speak under correction if it did happen. But like I'm saying, if it did happen, I would have known about it. <coughs> yes, yes, yes. She, she's the last. You can ask as many questions as you want. <laughs> okay, <thank> you. <laughs> Ah uh, no no no! We are not going to it's abuse it. Okay, ask the, she. She's we, we we serve the best for last. Okay. She's going to close. Okay. Yeah, uh, uh, I'll take it now. Why is the elections management body quiet when new uh, politicians are busy making statements? We have yet st statements from Dr. Kupe. We have yet statements from uh, Mwanzora. But why is the uh, the elections management body quiet about uh, what, what what transpired on uh, on Sunday? I want to tell you something. Uh, Zimbabweans in answer to your question. I want to tell you something. A Zimbabweans in answer to your question. When something happens, don't know what you already know. And don't pretend like you don't know what you know. I quoted Blessed Mshana yesterday. I listened to that program. Well, I, I, I must admit, I, I pinch on his programs, you know. So I listened to the opening remark, and he captured what happened. And I'm saying to you, if you have seen what you saw, I'm sure you were there on Sunday. At one stage, I think you wanted to follow Madam President, and you were stopped, you were denied completely. Your freedom of movement was curtailed. Now, when all those type of scenes, let me tell you what we call that, by the way. We call that militarization of a democratic process. It's only that we are not government, so we don't have guns. Now imagine us in government now with that type of attitude and we have guns, AK-47s, and if we become a nuclear power with nuclear patterns, what's, what's going to happen? You're not going to write anything about me. I'm probably one of the few people that media can trash and you still get an interview from me and I don't insult, I don't do anything. So I'm saying to you, what you saw on Sunday, the election management body may write if it decides to write, may not write if, if it decides not to write, or write if it decides to write. But it doesn't change what you know and what you saw. And I'm trying to put it into our conscience and our heads that you are dealing with government in waiting here. So what am I saying to you? I'm saying to you, how do you charge my future conduct? You judge it by my past conduct. Now think of me. If you, if you found me to be extremely aggressive and militarized approach on Sunday, if you found the party to be like that, think of us in government having the power that government has and the weapons that the government has. You probably need to observe when HG drives here. I saw that day it was raining. I think I, it was getting into Kweru on Saturday was coming down this side. It's raining, but the soldiers that are escorting him are ready to shoot at any stage. It's raining, but they are ready for action. That's the amount of power that state has. And that's not the only armored uh, personnel or vehicles that's there. It's, a, it's an uh, convoy. Now, if our attitude is that differences are handled through muscles, then, the, 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 then this country is in trouble. That's why I want you to look at what happened on Sunday, very objective, and ask yourself a question. Is this the country that I want? Now, I can tell you, I am sure that uh, the Honorable uh, Dr. Senator Monzora, that's not what he wants. I'm sure that's not what you want. That's not what I want. That's not what Dr. Cooper wants. And that is why, in her wisdom, she said, mm -mm. yes, we're in the middle of a contest, but this is not a contest. This is now militarized because all of the agents, uh, at least of the three candidates, they were already manhandled and thrown out. You remember the 2008 election, right? The, is it the runoff? The runoff. Now, if you now only have uh, personnel of one candidate running the show, the credibility of that process is brought into question. So I think that is what the lawyers are dealing with. They are dealing with, with all of that. 
Yes, uh, our queen. Okay, thank you. My name is Mildred Tinofa from Heart and Soul TV and Radio. Uh, my question is, you have a new president according to the results. Why are you disputing the results without a court order? Okay. I, th that's what the lawyers are dealing with, by the way. Uh, that's part of the legal opinion that, uh, that they are giving. Because remember, you are talking of the results, and then the other position says, this process is a nullity. Right? So the other position says this process is a nullity. The other position says there is a bona fide result. So I think the legal team is, is now engaged there. I'm, I'm quite positive that the leadership is is equal to the task they will they'll deal with it second question that's it she, she has thank you <laughs> thank you thank you ladies and gentlemen i will, but I, but I, I, will wait. Say, I wanted to say mr Puget, uh, uh, for you to be able to talk about the slip uh, that dr kupe uh, was given it was because the media captured it so